and thanks for tuning in to IDG's Corporate Update. Today I'm joined by Sean McLean, founder, president, and CEO of Absci, a company focused on generative AI drug creation. Sean, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, now, for those who are learning about Absci for the first time, can you give us an overview of the company? What inspired you to start Absci and how have you grown to where you are now? Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and one of the great things uh, about, uh, you know, generative AI and, and what OpenAI has done with, with ChatGPT is, is really uh, allowed our, our investors and even my mom and dad to really understand what, what we're doing here at Absci. It's, it's, it's essentially, in, in the simplest terms, the, the, the ChatGPT of antibody drug discovery and, and, and development. So, you know, you have Dolly where you go text to, to image. What we're doing is, is going from uh, let's say a cancer target to an antibody and using generative AI to uh, really allow us to kind of go from this paradigm of drug discovery where you're you're searching for a needle in, in the haystack to this new paradigm of drug creation where you're actually creating the, 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 the needle. And, and in our case, uh, it's the antibody drug candidate. And if you look at just how drug discovery and development has gone in the past it's it's been this very iterative long process that that's had a very low success rate you know it takes on average five and a half years to to go from idea to an ind or or drug in the clinic uh and and less than a five percent uh success rate uh and, and again it's because we use biological systems uh like immunizing a, a mouse uh, that's typically how you develop a, an antibody you inject the, the target of interest into the mouse, and the mouse uses its own immune system to then generate an antibody towards that given uh, target. Um, but what you, you have no control over is, is how the, the mouse immune system actually develops that, that antibody. You can't tell a mouse to go and generate a, an antibody that, that hits the, the area of the target that you want, that has the functionality, the developability, the manufacturability. Um, but I can tell my AI model to, uh, to, to do that. I can say, I want to hit this particular uh, area of the target. I want this functionality, this developability. Um, and so this is really what's going to uh, allow us to start increasing the success in the clinic uh, and shortening the, the, the timelines. You're actually able to have control over what you want to design. And, and not only that, we're able to actually start going after what are known as these undruggable targets where uh, a, a mouse uh, can't generate a, 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 an antibody towards a particular uh, target of, of, of interest, um, where now with you know, our generative AI platform, we can actually start developing antibodies towards these undruggable targets like GPCRs, ion channels, and that's what's going to start increasing that success rate um, as, as, as well. So it's that, that ability to, to control exactly what you want, being able to go after these undruggable targets, dramatically uh, decreasing the amount of time to, to get into the clinic because you can instantaneously get uh, what, what you want the, the first time. So uh, again, kind of in summary, it's the chat GPT for antibody drug discovery and, and development. It's incredible. It just seems like this is the future of medicine that's kind of been around the corner for a long time. And, and it's incredible to hear that this is something that is actually now going to be possible to be so specific about what you're doing with the medicine. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's the computerization of, of medicine. This is where everything is, is, is ultimate headed. And, and the thing that's really exciting, you, you think about this, if you're able to start increasing the success rate, going from, let's say, 4% to 10% to, to 20%, uh, what you end up being able to do is going after smaller and smaller patient um, um, populations and ultimately to the point of personalized medicine. And it's wow. actually becomes cost effective because if you look at if a 4% success rate in, in the clinic, the reason why drugs are so expensive is because you're paying for the 96% that, that failed. And so as you increase that success rate, you're able to go after smaller patient you know, populations and then ultimately get to, to personalized medicine and actually have it cost effective, which is uh, super exciting. And I think the last 10 years of, of the tech boom that, that you've seen, all that's going to be transitioned over into, into medicine with generative AI. And, and it's just, it's super exciting to, to see where, where this industry is headed. And it's, and it's a ton of fun to be on the forefront of it, um, you know, with the work we're doing here at Absci. 
So can I ask what sets you apart? You must have competition in this space. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of companies that have emerged in the AI drug discovery uh, space. And, and uh, you, you know, you take a look at, at those companies. Most of them have been focused on uh, small molecule drugs, uh, basically like pill in a bottle. Uh, okay. And, you know, the reason why they've been focused on uh, using AI for small molecules is the, the, the access to data. Uh, anybody can go and, and take a million member small molecule library, uh, go and screen it for, for its functionality, take that data and train their models. But it's completely different with uh, biologics or, or antibodies. Uh, so with small molecule, a, a chemist makes it, um, but with a, an antibody, you actually have to make it in a, in a living organism. Um, okay. and, and you know, currently, how do you make it? You make it in, in mammalian cells or, or, or CHO cells. And the scalability of that um, isn't great. You can maybe scale um, mammalian you know, production to maybe you know, producing 1,000 or 10,000 different antibodies to then go and screen for, for their functionality or uh, 10,000 different uh, uh, drug can. And what we actually focused in on 12 years ago when I founded the, the, the company, uh, we were not a generative AI uh, company. Uh, it was actually uh, uh, looking on how we can actually produce proteins and antibodies more effectively. So instead of producing them in mammalian cells, you produce it in a simple organism like uh, like E. coli. And what you're able to do in, in E. coli um, it, it, when producing an antibody, what you're able to do is actually called what's a, a pooled approach. I can basically take uh, my engineered E. coli that produce, you know, that can produce an antibody, take a test tube of it that has billions of cells in it. I can then can take a billion member antibody uh, library that encodes, you know, a billion different antibody drug candidates, put that into the test tube. And now I have every single E. coli making a different antibody drug candidate. And, uh, uh, you know, now I've scaled the production in that single test tube. I have a billion different drug candidates now produced versus, you know, tens of thousands. And uh, the next problem that you have to then solve is, okay, now that I've figured out the scalability of antibodies, how do I test their functionality? And that's where we developed our ACE screening assay, where I can interrogate every single E. coli that's making a different antibody drug candidate and look at the functionality uh, to a given target. You know how tightly is it binding to, to that target, and that's the data then that we that we feed into our our AI models and and train them. We built the wet lab technology that I just described to be able to scale that data to then train our our, our AI models, um, and that's really led to the success that that we've had, and and it has given us our competitive advantage. It, you know the winners in the future with generative AI. And you're already seeing this is is those that uh, have access to proprietary data or control the data or the technology that generates the the data, and then you apply the AI on top of that. That's the competitive advantage None that of our other competitors have, at least in is, large molecules. That's remarkable. You don't often hear about E. coli being the hero of a story. <laughs> no, absolutely, it totally is the hero of our of our story, and. Uh, when I you know, started the company 12 years ago, I would have never thought that E. coli was going to unlock uh, generative AI for, for biologics. I mean, it's, it's really incredible. Who would have seen that coming? That is really, really remarkable. So just to switch gears a little bit, in January, your platform successfully created and validated the Novo antibodies. Can you explain this breakthrough and how it's significant? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so what we were able to do, uh, which is really remarkable, take a structure of a of an antigen or a target that we were interested in, we were able to feed that into our generative AI models, and then be able to have our AI model then design antibodies uh, that would then bind to that that target of of interest. So we specified where we wanted it to bind, and then the model was you know generated um, antibodies. Uh, that it, 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 it predicted would bind to that target. And then 
uh, we went into the wet lab and validated that indeed those antibodies did bind to the, the, the target of interest. Um, with a very wide range of, of different affinities, which is truly exciting and was a, a was a huge breakthrough for us. And, and that's really driving, you know, business development efforts. And one of the reasons, you know, why, you know, we have partners like, like Merck that are partnered with us because, you know, we are really on the forefront um, and, and the bleeding edge of this, of this field. Wow. That gives me goosebumps. Was there an, was there a moment in the lab or, you know, or, or when this happened, when everyone was jumping up and down or was it sort of a slow process to get to this? It was a, it was a slow, it was a, it was a slow pro- So we, it, we ended up acquiring Denovium, which brought in our a- AI capabilities. And so it was about two years of like really integration of, of the wet lab technology and the AI building it out all out together. Uh, and then it was about a, a, a year ago when we were, you know, everything was 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 humming in terms of being able to, in kind of a six week time period, be able to to generate billions of data points to train the model, and then being able to validate that, you know, the the antibodies in in the wet lab started picking up in terms of the advancements that we were making because we essentially kind of started to become almost like a tech company because the six week turnaround right. time for biological data is really incredible. So that allows you to make very very rapid progress on on your models. And, and I do actually remember uh, when we, we showed first evidence that this was, was possible. Um, and, it, and it was actually the day uh, that, that our stock had, had like hit like an all-time low. And I, I totally remember it. It was, it was like, oh my gosh, we just made like one of the biggest breakthroughs in, in, uh, you know, in the industry's history. And our, our stock had just hit an all-time low, which is a, you know, which was kind of funny. And, uh, uh, but it was uh, exciting. We've only continued to, you know, progress it further from, from there, but uh, it, it was, uh, it was a really exciting moment. So clearly the science and technology side of things are going really well. Can we switch gears and talk a little bit about how your business model works? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we are, uh, I would say like a, a hybrid type of company where we have a, a business model where not only are we developing our own pipeline and our own assets, um, but we also um, partner with large pharma and, and, and biotech companies. And we are able to basically share in the upside of every single drug can that we produce. Um, we're able to get upfront milestones and, and royalties for every single uh, drug candidate that, that we work. Um, and you know, I think a perfect example of, of this is with uh, the partnership we closed with Merck and that was, uh, you know, roughly a year ago. And this was uh, for three targets. It was uh, a total deal size uh, for upfront and milestones of $610 million. So roughly $200 million um, per target. And again, that's for upfront payments and milestones. And then we additionally were, were able to get uh, royalties on, on the back end um, as, as well. So, you know, assuming the drug got approved, we'd, uh, you know, be able to, to have uh, royalties on uh, product sales, uh, and, and so uh, you know we see this, um, you know, being um, because it is highly scalable. Once you be, once you go fully in silico, you have the ability to to, to partner with um, with a lot of companies without having to have a lot of constraints in the in the wet lab. So we do see this fundamentally, you know, continuing to grow. And one of our key metrics that we share with the with the street every year is number of active programs. How many new programs have we signed up uh, e- each and every year? And kind of what's the MPV per, per value of, of those? And typically uh, it ranges for discovery programs of, of 15 to $20 million um, per program. And, uh, and, and that's of, uh, MPV value. And that has the risk adjusted nature in there. So we assume like a 4% um, royalty. And so last year we gave guidance of eight new active programs. We exceeded that with, with 10 active programs. And so if you assume a you know $20 million NPV, that's you know over $200 million of, of lifetime value that we had created last last year with signing those, those programs on. Um, and then recently uh, we brought on um, Dr. Andreas Bush, who uh, is, is um, on, on the drug development side. He was previously head of RD at, at Bayer and uh, was the CSO at Shire before it got acquired by uh, Takeda. And, you know, he's got over, I think, like uh, 10, 10 drugs approved from, from bench to, to approval under his leadership, which is, um, you know, really incredible for, for uh, an R&D executive at, at, at Large Pharma. And uh, we brought him on uh, to, to the team 
uh, to, to really help uh, start building out our own pipeline. We, we believe so much in, in our platform that we, we see the, the ability to generate um, you know, enormous value with our own pipeline as, as, as well. Um, additionally, uh, we wanted to, to show that we could also be the first to dose a human with an antibody that had been uh, uh, designed on a computer from scratch. And so that's going to also kind of be another you know, moment in time where you, you have another flywheel effect that drives more people onto the platform. And so um, that's, that's really the business model and kind of the key metrics we're you know, sharing with, with, with the street and investors um, over time. This is very exciting time in medicine and clearly for your business. If people want to find out more information, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can go onto our investor um, uh, website that that is on our website. Uh, we have all the recent um, um, manuscripts, presentations, uh, uh, you know, current um, corporate presentations. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, abside.com. Uh, go to the investor page and uh, you'll be able to get all the latest information on, on abside there. Mm -hmm.